Hello, this is Bunny Joker, and you're watching the second map making tutorial for Slope. If you missed the first one, you can find it on the description of this video. This tutorial will show you different things you can do to edit the map and make it more interesting, giving you more freedom to create what you have in mind. First of all, on this main screen, you'll be able to see the maps uh, you just worked on. There is an auto save and also the save we did and gave the chosen name for the map. If you open the file manager over here, you can see the projects you saved, you can create folders, use filters for types of objects, those are very good for you to organize your stuff. Ok, so going back to the main screen, I will select the last saved project here on the left by clicking the right trigger. We are back to the creation we did on the first tutorial, and now I will teach things that are a little bit more advanced for you. So the first thing I will do is teach you how you can edit an object that was already created. One thing that maybe you even already tried to do with the Surface 2 is give a continuation to the slope you were creating. If you don't know how to edit the object, you will just create a continuation like this. This way of making a continuation will actually work. It's not a problem if they are two separate objects. Inside the game, both of them will have snow textures, the player will pass through this part and won't even notice. So, this is something you can do. Create different paths for different directions like this. The only problem is that it becomes hard to refine some aspects of it. For example, you can see two big bumps here. If you zoom into this place, you will be able to see there is a gap between those shapes. If the player accidentally gets in here, he will be stuck. So this isn't a smooth connection. But there is something you can do to resolve this kind of problem, which is what I'm going to show you right now. Let me just delete those and come back to our little project here. Okay, so the first thing you will need to know is how to edit objects. Let's begin making this tree taller. When you grab an object and while grabbing it, you can press the blue button on the left controller. The object will go back to its place and now the object is in an editable state. In the case of a cube, what you can do is grab one of those axes and drag it around to change its size. So I will grab the green axis and make it bigger so I can make this tree taller. When you're okay with the result, you just have to press the blue button again to confirm that you're done editing that object. Okay, so I will just put it up a little bit because when you edit the object like that, it grows to both sides. So I'll just leave this tree really big like this. So, this is the type of editing you can do to this type of object, which is a cube. Now, this other kind of object, which is the surface, the type of addition you can make to it is having access to its control points. Those are points that you can drag around and change position so you can edit the shape of the surface object. So, for instance, if I take this control point and put it up and down, you will see the shape changing accordingly. I can change it any way I want. So let's say you want this bump to look more like a jump. I can put this control point here, move those other ones to make this shape of a kicker, and I will put them in a shape that makes sure this will look like a jump. Let's say you want to make this part of the slope not that wide. You can select several control points and move them closer. You can make this part more straight. Let's say that with those other two, I want to make a bump close to the tree. But those that make the jump put a little lower. So you see, you can make a lot of refining by editing those control points. So this is how you edit an object. By doing this, I didn't change the type of object I was editing. The surface was still a surface object. On the next tutorial, I will show you what you can do when you convert an object to a subdivision object. When you do this, you will have much more freedom to do whatever you want with the object you are editing. It's not hard and it's actually pretty cool. But for now, let's focus on the basic version of editing. So right here, on the end of the slope, I can see that the surface is twisted. To fix this, I will grab the surface, click the blue button, check how the control points are and change their position to make it straight. I'll finish by getting all those more organized. So for now, I'll just create another surface to represent the continuation of this slope. 
I'll create this big curve over here and we'll make it finish right here. So I'll grab the ending point and change it to this place. Let me show you again how I made it. The right controller kind of did most of the work going around the center and the left controller didn't move much. I could have also made it pretty bended so this part will look much more like a half pipe. So I'll delete the other one and put this one in its place. I'll just edit the first surface and make this look like a jump to guarantee that the player will be able to reach the second part. So the player will come from that part, will jump here, make this curve and follow up until the end. I can already see that this part is ascending a little bit. I'm afraid the player won't have enough speed to go through, so I'll just add the control points here and put them down a little bit. Okay, now there is two more things I want to show you before finishing this second tutorial. Those are types of things you can add to the map. One of them is a rock surface, which I'll add to the sides of the slope. So opening the tools menu again, if you click the surface tool a second time, it will open the settings for it like I've shown you before. On it, you can turn on the four point surface. If you combine this with the low poly option, you will be able to create a surface using four points instead of three and low poly. You can use this to create geometric shapes like this that have a low number of triangles, which will translate as good performance when inside the game. Now I have to use the pink color that will translate into the game as rocks. So I will use this to make rock mountains around my map. I'm adding a big rock wall on this side and another one here on this other side. Now I have to show you a useful tool that for you to access it, you will have to activate it by going to settings, then clicking on this star here, which says beta. Then you have to enable the tool belt. With this on, anytime you press the right hand grip when your hand is not hovering any objects and you drag it to the left, you will open the tool belt. For now, the only thing I want to show you among these tools is this one on the left. When you have it on your hands, it will show if the normals of an object is facing the right direction. If it's not, you can just click on the object using the tip of this tool and it will invert the object's normals. This wall on the right side, you can see that it's facing the wrong direction. So I will hover it with the tools tip and click on it to invert its normals. This is something that can happen when you're using the surface tool. So it's always good to check before exporting your map. So remember to just pick this tool up so you can see if everything is facing the right direction. So the last thing we're going to do before exporting and testing is to add a rail to this map. So I will open the tools menu and to make a rail, I use the stroke tool. With it, you can create very consistent lines like this, which will have full control of its thickness. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab the black color, which will translate inside the game as metal. Anything you paint black on your map will have the metal material, with the exception of the black cube, since colored cubes will have special functionalities like spawn point, end point, and more special objects which I will show on future tutorials. If I put the right thumbstick left or right, I can choose the thickness of the rail I'll create. Since I know the player is about the size of that cube, I will use this thickness. I see there's a jump here, which is good to use as a kicker before the rail, making it easier for the player to land on it. So I'll make a rail that goes up here, continue straight forward a little, and then goes down. The only way to know if it's super hard is by testing it. Before considering it done, I will try to get rid of some non-intended curves. To do this, I'll just grab the rail and press the blue button on the left controller to edit its controls. I will delete some of them. So I'll start deleting the ones I don't need and putting three control points close to each other on the edges of the straight part of the rail. Now the rail has the intended shape I wanted. I hope this jump gives me a good pop to be able to land on it. So we have rail, walls, the slope, we change the size of the trees, let's test it. So the first thing I will do is save the project on Gravity Sketch, done. Now I will guarantee I'm exporting it on local. If the configuration is the same, I don't have to do anything, just press on export. 
tutorial one. So if I leave it with the same name when exporting, it will replace that first version we exported to the game and will be represented by the same item on the game's levels list. If you don't want to replace that one and actually be able to test both one in-game, you can put a different name that hasn't been used before. Since I don't want two maps, I will just leave it with the same name for it to be replaced as an update to the level I was already creating. So now it's exported, let's get inside the slope. Here we are! I'll find my map here on the list. We'll press import again, since it has been changed. If you just press load without re-importing, you will play the old version of the map. So I will press first import, then load. And here it is! The stone walls, the rail down there, let's go! The rail... A little jump... The 360 curve... Let me try to grab a wall here... And I'll get into the end. If you want, you can check how your map looks with different sun positions. Right now it's on a sunset back there. You can go down here on general options and press randomize daytime. Each time you press it, the sun will be on a random location. With the sun over there, it's pretty interesting. So let's do it one more time and finish this tutorial. It will be nice if after the rail I can land on a reception instead of a flat surface. Let's ride the wall here again. Okay, awesome. With this, we finish map making tutorial number two. Thank you very much for being here with me up until this point. There are still a lot of things I want to show you which will help you create awesome maps. Take a nice rest and head to the tutorial number three. See you there.